Mr. Happy Living here, and I'm happy to be broadcasting from WITV7 in the beautiful Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina, USA. Hey, friends, please join me for just a minute and imagine how wonderful you'd feel living the unique and distinct reason you were put on this planet to live, doing work you love, with people you love, in places you love, and all the while creating something of real value to others. That's what, that's what I call a life of significance. And I can tell you, it makes for a very happy life. And so can Marissa Chesluck. She comes highly recommended by Anessa Powell from way back in episode 73. Marissa is my guest star today, and she's here to share her unique and distinct journey to her life of significance. Hey, Marissa, welcome to the show. Hey, Matt. Thank you so much for having me. What an honor to talk with you today. I'm excited about our conversation. Wonderful. Why don't you get us started by telling us what you're doing these days to make your mark of significance on the world? Yes. These days, what I am doing to make a significant, a light, lead a life of significance is to inspire the fire. And what I mean by that is that I believe the collective energy of people on fire is what is going to change our workplaces, going to change our families, our communities, and ultimately what is going to change our world. And so I get to do that. I get to do that. And I love the word inspire, because it means the Latin root, it comes from the Latin word inspare, which means to breathe life into. And that's what I really feel called to do is to breathe life into women and underrepresented groups specifically, but to all people to help them do exactly what you're saying, live their best life, lead a life of significance yeah. to have more impact in the world and influence in the world. And so I do that through coaching and speaking. Um, I also do that through facilitating as well. And I I love what I do. I wake up every morning excited about the impact that I get to make on the world. Yeah, that's what it's all about. When you discover your reason, it really, life gets really fun and enjoyable. Not easy necessarily, but right. it has purpose you know, to it. Before we move on, I'd like you to talk about these four values I found of yours. Courage over comfort, connect deeply, be curious and create space. Tell us how those values help you create your life of significance. Yeah. So courage over comfort. I firmly believe that those things that we are called to do and that we want to do are going to be hard. And like you said, just because mm -hmm. we are called to do it or is our purpose, does not mean that it is necessarily going to be easy? And so I believe that I am called to yeah. live a life that, that focuses on that courage over comfort. Um, I believe that I am a space holder. And so, so often we are not in spaces where we feel heard and seen and valued. And I really do want to create that space for others. And so that space holding. And then the purposeful risk-taking is something, again, that kind of goes with that courage over comfort of um, really leaning into that discomfort and not shying away from it. And knowing that those things that we hold so dear and that matter most to us, um, that those non-negotiables, that they are worth taking risks. And to, or, forgive me, Matt, what was that last one? There was one be, more. Be curious, be curious, connect deeply. Yes, be curious. Yeah, be curious. That, for, yeah that for me is um, so important, right? Is to embrace life with a curiosity mindset. Yeah. And when we come at it from that space, it opens our minds up to possibilities instead of barriers. Yeah. Yeah. I like that you did that. I wrote a book called The Belief Roadmap about defining your own philosophies of life or your own values, how you're going to live your life. Because if you don't do that, you're going to live using the values or the philosophies of something else, culture yes. or your parents or something else, but it's not going to be you. So yes. I really applaud you for for drilling down on what your values are. And sharing. may I just add real quick? Yeah. May I just add real quick? Yeah, I was just having a, co a conversation with a coaching client this morning about that, about how do we live out our values and how do we live in that space? And so oftentimes that's what happens, right? We we start living everybody else's values and those external yep. things, um, and that's what leads us to this place of burnout and overwhelm yep. and feeling yep. frustrated because we're not living our authentic life. And, and my, I'll just add on to that as a husband and a father of three women now, young women, mm -hmm. my youngest just turned 18. I, uh, I can say this without being chauvinistic. <laughs> women have a harder time doing that because they are natural caregivers and they tend to put themselves 
at the end of the line instead of at the beginning. And awesome. defining your own values and your own philosophies of life, that puts you at the front of the line so you can be more powerful and then be more of a giver. Yes. But you can't give from an empty cup. Yes. Yes. 100%. Couldn't agree more. Very good. Well, let's talk about, do a little mathematics so our friends all around the World Wide Web can get to know you through our happy formula. Yes. It's a simple but powerful equation that goes like this. Power plus purpose equals happy. So let's start with power. What are your personal practices for building up all the power you need to get things done, whether that's physically or mentally or financially or spiritually or emotionally? In other words, Marissa, what do you do on a regular basis to create all the power you need to take really good care of yourself and your loved ones and still have plenty left over so you can be a giver to others? Yeah. So my practices fall into what I would call three categories. One is the mindset, one is well-being, and one is that connection piece. And so for my mind, I do a lot of reading. I love to read. That's part of my nightly routine. Um, I move my body. That's part of that kind of well-being aspect. So I love to get outside. I love to connect with nature um, and be out in the sunshine. That is my being in a forest, uh, hiking on a trail. That is my happy place. Wow. So I try to walk yeah. daily. Um, I also take time to connect deeply with others, kind of like we were talking about with my values. Like that is something that's very important to me, um, especially in this world, right? We're so disconnected from each other. And I know that when I am not connecting with other humans on a daily basis, that I get out of whack. So I need that on a daily basis. And I also spend a- We are- Yeah, go ahead. We are starving for connection these yes. days. And the, the, the epidemic just- put a spotlight on it, but it's all these devices and there's so much disconnection where we can do things on our in isolation. And yeah. it's like a slow boiling of a frog. You know, you don't realize what's happening to your life. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And the other thing that I do is I also journal. So, and I, um, there's a, um, there's a book out there called the artist way. And they talk about, um, taking time and just journaling for, um, three pages long. Mm -hmm. And so that is what, something that I try to do. And so sometimes it's stream of consciousness and it makes absolutely no sense. And then other days I'm like, wow, I just solved world peace in three pages in my journal this morning. So um, that's also another important practice that I incorporate into my daily life as well. Very good. All right, Marissa, let's dive into my favorite power generating concept. It's called a Kaizen state of mind. Yep. And it's this beautiful Japanese idea that small incremental improvements add up over time to yield great big results. And I love it because it's based on mindset, not circumstance. Guys, any life is knowing there's always something I can do better tomorrow than today. And it creates this optimistic, gentle, but powerful and continuous uplifting of my life day after day after day. So Marissa, mm -hmm. how does Kaizen in your life help you increase your power to continuously become more so you can continuously give more? Yes. So I am a big fan of James Clear and his book, The Atomic Habits. And so I have drunk the Kool-Aid and I track my habits. So those personal practices that I just shared, um, I have a tracker right here next to me where I take a look at every day. Like, how am I doing? Did I do that today? Did I fill my cup in that capacity? How did I do that? And then every week I'm taking a look at those and I'm saying, okay, did I have consistency? What was hard? What, yeah. um, what didn't go well. And I also do a weekly evaluation for myself. So I take a look at my week and I ask myself like, what filled me up this week? What mm -hmm. drained me this week? Um, what took away um, or sucked this, my, you know, my soul out of me this week? Um, and yep. what worked and what didn't? And what do I want to do differently based on that information? And I think that is so important because we don't, we don't take time in our busy lives to press pause and really take some time to evaluate what is working, what's not, and why do I feel so drained? Why do I yeah. feel so lit up, you know? Yeah, it's it's reflection. And yeah. um, I, I what happens in our lives that you're helping to prevent is we just, our lives get cluttered and cluttered and cluttered, like a like a garage or like a bedroom or like a closet. And oh, there's gosh, stuff in there all garages. over the place. <laughs> and it's no longer serving you, but it's still there. And it yes. weighs on you. And so that happens in our lives too. We find ourselves doing things and worrying about things that no longer serve us, but we're just used to doing them. Yes. And so when you reflect, you can say, wait a second, that's not feeling good to me. And I don't really need to do it anymore. I can outsource it or I can just 
stop it. And uh, yeah. really, it's very liberating. It is. It is. And we often, that's why I love the habit tracker is because it's helping me to look at like, is this a habit that's really serving me? Or is right. this a habit that needs some updating? You know, just like a computer, right? It needs to be internally updated every once in a while. Every once in a while, we yeah. need an internal update too. And that takes a, you got to take a look at those behaviors um, that we're, that we're incorporating into our daily life. Yeah. And I think yeah. just one last thing on that, when you, if you're touching base with yourself on a, on a more regular basis, then you can nip things in the bud before they become overwhelming. Yes. And that's the same thing like cleaning the room. You know, yes. parents always say, if you don't throw your shirt on the ground in the first place, <laughs> you won't have to pick it up. And right. that's the same with our personal habits and lives and, and friendships and relationships and all yes. of that. Yes. Yes. And, and paying attention to that. And that comes back to that curiosity mindset of like I'm taking a look at those behaviors and, and, look, and asking yourself from a place of curiosity, not from a place of judgment, but is this really serving me? Is this really moving me towards the greater vision that I have for my life? And if not, yeah. what do we need to do about it? Out it goes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's explore purpose. That's the second element of the happy formula. And Marissa, yeah. I've observed that major life transformations, that that big discovery of purpose so often comes from devastation, mm -hmm. addiction, abuse, disease, death, disaster, something awful strips a life to its core, resulting in some change. However, in my book, Turning Inspiration into Action, I share the transformational process that I've used to discover purpose in my life using inspiration. So how about you, Marissa? Was there a specific moment or event or crisis or inspiration that revealed to you the God-given purpose you were meant to live? Yeah, I think there were a series of, of events and crises um, and it kind of builds up to that moment where it was like, okay, this has been made clear to me. And it, to be honest, it took me some time away from that crisis and away from that event, mm -hmm. those series of events before I had that perspective on, hey, this is what you're supposed to do. And for mm -hmm. me, what that looked like was I um, spent most of my professional career in academia hmm. and, and in higher education. And um, for most of my life, I was chasing status. I was chasing money. And that led me to a place of complete burnout, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so I finally, you know, at work, I finally got this position that I was so desperately wanting so desperately wanting. It was, a, it was a leadership position. I was excited about the impact that I could make in that role. And with that responsibility, um, I was excited about the way that my voice could be utilized in that space and how I could have influence and, and wield that, you know, that, that influence as well. And that, that promotion into that senior leadership role happened at the exact same time that my husband and I found out that we were pregnant with my daughter. Oh. And so and, and this was a child that we had so desperately wanted. We had been praying for her for many, many years. Um, and she is an in vitro fertilization and IVF baby. And so yeah. it was a profound how long, moment. How long was that grueling journey that you described? Uh, it, was a, getting... it was about a three-year journey. It was about okay. a three-year journey okay. to, yeah. to conceive her. So simultaneously, I'm getting this new position at work. Right. And then I'm also getting this new role at home too. I was going to be a new mom. And yeah. so I, both of those things happened simultaneously. I had my child. I went off on maternity leave. I came back from maternity leave and I was dropping my daughter off at daycare and I was crying all the way to work. Yeah. And then I was picking her up in the afternoon and I was crying all the way home. And then I was spending every night crying to my husband, like, I can't do this. This isn't fulfilling for me. This isn't life-giving for me. And I had a lot of kind of epiphanies in that space. Part of it was I just, you know, and being a dad, a dad to three young women, you get this, but it's like, there's a, there's a responsibility anytime you're a parent, right? You're responsible for this yeah. life. You are a leader for this new yeah. human. And especially as a little girl, and she was, you know, just a baby at the time, but I knew that I, she was watching, right? Yeah. And she was watching the moves that I was making. And I don't want my daughter to ever feel like she is stuck in a situation with no agency, with no choice. Um, and I don't want her to ever feel like she has no option or, or choice to get out of that situation, whether it's a relationship, a job, any, any situation that's not serving her. 
Um, and so I, I made a very difficult decision in 2019 to resign from my job mm -hmm. and take some time to do some healing. Cause I was just emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually tapped out. Like I was, I was pretty crispy. Like I had mm -hmm. nothing left to give. Mm -hmm. And, um, my husband was like, let's take some time and, and find some healing. And it was in that healing that I was able to recognize that I had burnt out to a crisp and that in that space, I had nothing left to give my friends, yeah. my family, my colleagues, myself. Yeah. And that was the moment that it was like, you know what? I don't want this to happen for my daughter. I don't want this to happen for other women. And like you said earlier, like women, especially and under and other underrepresented groups. Yeah. They don't have that support. And I want to be that, that inspiration. I want to be that yeah. spark for them. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very good. And then, so after you realized that, how long did it take you before you had come up with your idea of your business and started actually working on inspiring the fire, as you say? Yeah. So my, I resigned in March. So it's been exactly five years, um, March of 2019. My husband was like, take a month, do some healing, figure out what your next step is. And full disclosure, Matt, that month turned into about six months, but mm -hmm. that was what it took. Um, and so in six months, I went back to, I decided that I wanted to be a coach, wanted to be a speaker and uh, went back to school to get my coaching certification. And in that process, realized that this was what I was called to do. And, and this was the gift that I wanted to offer the world. Very good. And then one quick thing before we, we go to a break. Um, I, I realized in my research that you are another one of my guests that's hiked Mount Kilimanjaro. How did yes. you and Mount Kilimanjaro come to be united? Mm, and that's also part of the story too. Um, we came to be, because I'm just a big dreamer. And so I had learned about Mount Kilimanjaro. I had always been a um, endurance athlete and had done some marathons, had done a half Ironman and then was just looking for the next challenge. And that was the next challenge. So yeah, in uh, June of 2012, I summited uh, Mount Kilimanjaro and that was an amazing experience. And, you know, that also That's taught awesome. me, to, that also taught me about focusing on the journey and detaching from the outcome, which I think so many of us are so focused on. And that has been a big uh, point for me as well in my journey too, is to help me to, because because with Mount Kilimanjaro, there's no guarantee that you're going to summit because no, of a lot of different a lot reasons. Of don't. Yeah, yeah, a lot so, of people don't. And for you and for anyone listening, we are starting to have quite a collection of Mount Kilimanjaro stories at Happy Living. So go to happyliving.com and just, just search on Mount Kilimanjaro and see all the interesting people you're going to meet. Yeah, yeah. So- so, Marissa, thank you for that. Now, let's take a commercial break so our sponsor can spread a little love with our audience. Ah. Mr. Happy Living here. I love good things made for good people. That's why I love Happy Living's online e-course. It's an eight-week-long deep dive into you and the inspired life you want to live. The life you were put here on this earth to live. The one that you and only you can live. Eight weeks of lectures and ideas and topics and supporting materials and powerful self-improvement tools. All designed for you. All designed to help you create the tools and the power and the confidence you need to discover your purpose and to discover the life you were meant to live and to feel incredibly inspired and motivated to decide you will live your life to its fullest. It's all designed to help you create the unique and distinct philosophy of you and your inspired life. Go to happyliving.com, select our e-course and save a hundred bucks with promo code WITV7. And for every enrollment, I'll donate another 100 bucks to WITV7. For $300 in about 30 hours, I promise you'll never 
ever be the same again. And we're back, and this is the Something Significant Show, and I'm your host, Matt Gersper. And my special guest star today is Marissa Chesluck. She is a facilitator and motivational speaker with over 20 years of experience delivering high-impact, experiential programs for women, leaders, and teams. She's a leadership consultant and coach and an educator at heart. She loves to assess needs and opportunities and then co-create programs to optimize individual and company-wide performance. Her passions are empowering women to increase impact, influence, and income, all while reducing stress and burnout. Well, Marissa, I love that. And I think yes. you're going to love this article called The Science Behind the Power of Giving. Mm. It says that the act of giving itself can be a gateway to discovering your reason for being on the planet. It says that science tells us that giving our time, our time and talents and treasures is a powerful pathway for discovering purpose and overcoming difficulties and finding fulfillment and meaning in life. So I updated our formula. Power plus purpose plus giving equals really happy. <laughs> so what do, what do you think, Marissa? Has giving your time and your talents and your treasures been a pathway for discovering your purpose and for getting past difficulties that you've faced and for bringing real meaning into your life? It really has. And I feel like this is my gift. And, and this is the way that I give back to the world and to our community um, is through coaching and through speaking and through inspiring other other people. And that that is what truly gives me joy and, and lights me on fire for sure. And so I, I'm grateful to be able to give back to people in that way and stand witness to their transformational journeys. Yeah. So that's wonderful. The science tells us that giving to others helps bring real meaning to our lives. And yes. the joy that comes from that fourth element of significance, doing work that creates value for others confirms it. But there's something more to it than just the giving, Marissa. You see, I believe that the real magic of life comes when you're giving from living in your purpose. Mm -hmm. So Marissa, the audience and I would like to know how it makes you feel to be happily living your life and coaching and doing the work that you were put on this planet to do. Yeah. And the cl a client says to you that you offered her ideas that she hadn't thought of and that you left her reeling with possibilities as well as a reviewed curiosity and excitement she hadn't felt in a long time. And then mm -hmm. she continued saying a little under two hours later, she had a plan and in three months and with a little courage, that plan had become <laughs> a reality when she began a new career in project management. So Marissa, how does it make you feel to be impacting people from living in your purpose? Well, just like I said, like that, that is what lights me on fire. Like that is like when I am feeling calm and connected and in my zone in doing my purpose and living that out, I am able to contribute in ways that I could have never imagined. And it just, it's almost, it's almost like that, that experience of flow within me, if that makes, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Um, I mm -hmm. just, I feel it. And I, it, yeah, it's that fire inside of me that gets lit when I get to stand witness to people doing that. Yep. And that's, that feeling is exactly what this show is all about. It's finding that magic in each of our lives. And it's available for everyone. That's what I believe anyways. And it comes from this great big happy circle. Giving starts with giving. Giving your time and talents and treasures is a powerful pathway for discovering your purpose. So it's like when you're giving, if you're not getting lit up about it, you're not in your purpose. Right. So if you're giving and you're lit up about it, you've, you've discovered your purpose. And then giving from living in your purpose brings a profound joy to your life, but also to the lives of those around you. It seems that giving leads to purpose and giving from purpose leads to joy. So to better capture the exponential power of our happy formula, Marissa, let me tweak it just a little bit more to yeah. power times purpose times giving equals happy to the third power. And that's really, <laughs> truly, deeply happy. Does that sound about right to you? Yes. Yes, it does. And that Honestly, Matt, that is where I live. And I, I mean, people are always, you know, I hear people drudge, you know, talk about drudgery, about going to work. And I'm like, I could do what I'm doing every single yeah. day for the rest of my life because it does truly bring me joy. And I, I love getting up every morning. I love being with my clients. I love yeah. 
I love the work that I do. Yep, that's how it is, folks, when you find it. So keep looking for it. All right, let's wrap things up with a, with a lightning round. I love yes. the power of words and the capacity for great quotes to change lives. So I'm going to read a few of my favorites and have you tell us what they mean to you and give us the first thing that comes to mind, Marissa, because we call this a lightning round. Okay. Here we Do go. It. From Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. Know what sparks the light in you, then use that light to illuminate the world. I think that is all about knowing who you are and in your inner core, knowing who you are as a whole person and who you are as your authentic self. When you do that work, that's when you are able to shine your light and, and share your brilliance with the rest of the world. Yeah, Oprah did in about 12 words what we've been talking about for a half an hour. Right. <laughs> She's so concise. Thank you, Oprah. Yeah, from, from Maya Angelou, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. Yes, that is one of my favorite quotes mm -hmm. because I think so often, especially as women, we beat ourselves up because we're like, I should have known better. I should have done this. I should have done that. And we do that yep. to the nth degree. And I think that's what I always tell people. You do better until you know better. And then when you know better, you can do better. And so I think yep. that's what she captures in the essence of that, of that quote. Yeah, it's about uh, self-acceptance, really, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Very good. This is from the Buddha. And he said, there is no path to happiness. Happiness is the path. Mm. Ooh. There is no path to happiness. I think it's finding finding that inner joy. And there is no linear path to it. It's not a linear journey. It's a, it's an all around swirl around experience that only you can take. Um, and when you take that, when you do that work, that's when you find that true happiness. Yeah. He, he might be talking a little bit about our idea of retirement, work your bail <laughs> off all your life, and then you can finally relax and be happy instead of finding your, what fires you up then you don't need yeah. to retire every day. Yeah. Is, so there's not a journey there. It's just happiness is the path. Yes, know? yes. And it's funny that you say that because my husband and I talked all the time. We used to say that we wanted to retire at 55 and we were both kind of creeping towards that age. And I'm like, I don't want to retire at 55. Like I want to keep doing what I'm doing. Like I love it. Yeah. I yeah. love it. No, it's, we're, we were made to work. You don't have to work for for money. But you have to work for for contribution. That's my belief. You have to. Yeah. You, so you you said it yourself. You wake up every day and you're excited to get at it. That's how we should be at age fifty, at age eighty, at age hundred. Yeah. Uh, this is from Peter Drucker. We'll go a little businessy. Okay. Efficiency is doing things right. Effectiveness is doing the right things. Hmm. Yeah. I. Mm. I'm not big on the productivity type things. I'm more about paying attention to your energy. And I think that's what makes you a more effective leader and more effective human. Um, so I don't know if that's what he's getting at, but that's kind of what I you're, take from that. You're touching base and doing your you know weekly recap of what's working for you, what's not working for you. That's choosing the right things to do. That's yeah. what he's talking about. So it's not becoming more efficient at the, at the things it's discovering what are the right things for you yeah what is your purpose and yeah. when you find that then you you look crazy like you and me because you're happy right right absolutely i love to be right. crazy <laughs> this is from jack london he said i would rather be a superb meteor every atom of me in magnificent glow or on fire for your words Mm -hmm. than a sleepy and permanent planet. Hmm. When you said that, the first thing that came to mind, one of my clients today was talking about being a starburst. And so when you said this, yeah. the, the meteor, I was thinking about that starburst and just how like when we do that inner work and that meteor just like shines and just leaves everything in its path, a complete yeah. a glow. That is what is so cool when you are in your when you are in your purpose when you're in your calling yeah 
Yeah, very good. Finally, this is our show anchor from Goth. And he said, whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. Yeah. I think for me, what comes up is so often, especially again, especially for women and underrepresented groups, we are looking for the confidence first. And I always tell folks that confidence comes from taking action. And so mm-hmm. taking action is just an experiment to see what works, what doesn't work. And you take that data and you learn from it and you take more action from that space. And so that's what comes up for me when, when I hear that quote. It's taking, yeah. act, that confidence comes from taking action. Yeah, I think you're right that, uh, let's say, a lack of confidence undermines so much of what people really want to do. Yeah. And boy, if you can, I think that's what uh, you and also uh, Johan von Goth are talking about there. If yes. you can just get in the action, then it creates its own momentum. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good. And you feel, you feel bolder. You're ready to take more action. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. All right, folks. Now it's your chance to be a giver too. If you can hear my voice and you were inspired by today's show with Marissa Cheslick. Would you please share a little love with our fabulous broadcast team by giving what you can to WITV7. They're a 501c3 charity on a mission to educate, empower, and encourage. They do good works with your kindness. Marissa, I love your quest for more, more impact, more fulfillment, more meaning, more energy, more congruence, and more opportunities to operate in your unique and distinct zone of genius. And I admire your desire to transform people and organizations from the inside out by helping them spark their inner fire. And I'm super happy that you've shared your focused and fiery spirit on our show today. Would you take just a minute or two and share any parting remarks you'd like to leave our audience? Yeah, I'll leave you with what I said earlier. The collective energy of people on fire is what's gonna change our world. And if you are not on fire, you can't be a part of that collective energy. And I want for myself and for my young daughter, I want people that are on fire because I think that we still have a lot of work to do in this world and in this, um, in our communities and in our workplaces and even in our families. And so I want to, I hope that you will continue to pursue that fire. And I hope that I will have the opportunity to continue to inspire that fire. Very good. Wonderful. Thank you, Marissa. And I also want to thank WYTV7 for hosting and promoting our show so we can keep interviewing inspiring guest stars like Marissa and reaching folks just like you, ready to create your own extraordinary lives. And most especially, thank you, viewers and listeners. You'll find links to social media and all things Marissa Cheslick. Find her, friend her, schedule a free 30-minute intro call to see how she can help, help you spark your inner fire and unlock more of the life you desire. Yes. We'll post all her links in the show notes. And from me to you, dear friends, I love you and I want you to be really, truly, deeply happy too. So go to happyliving.com right now and take our happy quiz because measuring your happy helps you focus your attention on it and focusing attention on it attracts change and learning and improvement all to flow right into your life. And once you take the quiz and it only takes a minute, then give some thought to what we can do together, you and me, to improve the happy of your world, one person at a time. Till next time, I'm Matt Gersper, you are awesome, and this is The Something Significant Show. And we're out.